Chapter 9 of Anthem by Ayn Rand. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. We have not written for many days. We did not wish to speak, for we needed no words to remember that which has happened to us. It was on our second day in the forest that we heard steps behind us. We hid in the bushes and we waited. The steps came closer, and then we saw the fold of the white tunic among the trees and a gleam of gold. We leapt forward, we ran to them, and we stood looking upon the golden one. They saw us, and their hands closed into fists, and the fists pulled their arms down as if they wished their arms to hold them, while their bodies swayed, and they could not speak. We dared not come too close to them. We asked, and our voice trembled. How did you come to be here, golden one? But they whispered only, we have found you. How did you come to be in the forest? we asked. They raised their head, and there was a great pride in their voice. They answered, We have followed you. Then we could not speak, and they said, We heard that you had gone to the uncharted forest, for the whole city is speaking of it. So on the night of the day when we heard it, we ran away from the home of the peasants. We found the marks of your feet across the plain where no men walk. So we followed them and we went into the forest, and we followed the path where the branches were broken by your body. Their white tunic was torn, and the branches had cut the skin of their arms, but they spoke as if they had never taken notice of it, nor of weariness, nor of fear. We have followed you, they said, and we shall follow you wherever you go. If danger threatens you, we shall face it also. If it be death, we shall die with you. You are damned, and we wish to share your damnation. They looked upon us, and their voice was low, but there was bitterness and triumph in their voice. Your eyes are as a flame, but our brothers have neither hope nor fire. Your mouth is cut of granite, but our brothers are soft and humble. Your head is high, but our brothers cringe. You walk, but our brothers crawl. We wish to be damned with you rather than blessed with all our brothers. Do as you please with us, but do not send us away from you. Then they knelt and bowed their golden head before us. We had never thought of that which we did. We bent to raise the golden one to their feet, but when we touched them it was as if madness had struck in us. We seized their body and pressed our lips to theirs. The golden one breathed once, and their breath was a moan, and then their arms closed around us. We stood together for a long time, and we were frightened that we had lived for twenty-one years and had never known what joy is possible to men. Then we said, Our dearest one, fear nothing of the forest. There is no danger in solitude. We have no need of our brothers. Let us forget their good and our evil. Let us forget all things save that we are together and that there is joy as a bond between us. Give us your hand. Look ahead. It is our own world, Golden One, a strange, unknown world, but our own. Then we walked on into the forest, their hand in ours. And that night we knew that to hold the body of woman in our arms is neither ugly nor shameful, but the one ecstasy granted to the race of men. We have walked for many days. The forest has no end, and we seek no end. But each day added to the chain of days between us and the city is like an added blessing. We have made a bow and many arrows. We can kill more birds than we need for food. We find water and fruit in the forest. At night we choose a clearing, and we build a ring of fires around it. We sleep in the midst of that ring, and the beasts dare not attack us. We can see their eyes green and yellow as coals watching us from the tree branches beyond. The fires smolder as a crown of jewels around us, and smoke stands still in the air in columns made blue by the moonlight. We sleep together in the midst of the ring, the arms of the golden one around us, their head upon our breast. Some day we shall stop and build a house when we shall have gone far enough, but we do not have to hasten. The days before us are without end, like the forest. We cannot understand this new life which we have found, yet it seems so clear and so simple. 
When questions come to puzzle us, we walk faster, then turn and forget all things as we watch the golden one following. The shadows of leaves fall upon their arms as they spread the branches apart, but their shoulders are in the sun. The skin of their arms is like a blue mist, but their shoulders are white and glowing, as if the light fell not from above, but rose from under their skin. We watch the leaf which has fallen upon their shoulder, and it lies on the curve of their neck, and a drop of dew glistens upon it like a jewel. They approach us, and they stop laughing, knowing what we think, and they wait obediently, without questions, till it pleases us to turn and go. We go on and bless the earth under our feet, but questions come to us as we walk in silence. If that which we have found is the corruption of solitude, then what can men wish for save corruption? If this is the great evil of being alone, then what is good and what is evil? Everything which comes from the many is good. Everything which comes from the one is evil. Thus we have been taught with our first breath. We have broken the law, but we have never doubted it. Yet now, as we walk through the forest, we are learning to doubt. There is no life for men save in useful toil for the good of all their brothers. But we live not when we toiled for our brothers. We were only weary. There is no joy for men save the joy shared with all our brothers. But the only things which taught us joy were the power we created in our wires and the golden one. And both these joys belong to us alone. They come from us alone. They bear no relation to our brothers, and they do not concern our brothers in any way. Thus do we wonder. There is some error, one frightful error, in the thinking of men. What is that error? We do not know, but the knowledge struggles within us, struggles to be born. Today the Golden One stopped suddenly and said, We love you. But they frowned and shook their head and looked at us helplessly. No, they whispered, that is not what we wish to say. They were silent. Then they spoke slowly, and their words were halting like the words of a child learning to speak for the first time. We are one alone and only and we love you who are one alone and only we looked into each other's eyes and we knew that the breath of a miracle had touched us and fled and left us groping vainly and we felt torn torn for some word that we could not find end of chapter nine